if we're down to the last canteen of water, we share that canteen of water. If we're down to the last few rounds of ammunition, we redistribute that ammunition because the blood that we bleed is Marine Corps blood. From the very first time that you earned the title Marine, you are changed, and you're changed forever. It's the branding of that Eagle Globe and anchor on your heart that just nobody else can quite understand who hasn't been a Marine, who hasn't earned that title. I would not be in the United States Senate as chairman of the Armed Services Committee had it not been for all the wonderful things that the United States Marine Corps did for me. Training, discipline, accountability, courage. I learned that from the masters. We live our history. The battle streamers on our colors, the heroism and the sacrifice that went before us, we're constantly aware of that. I've always stressed the heritage that you have in the Marine Corps. You have a long line of Marines going way, way back. I think you feel that, and you feel that kind of a heritage, and you feel that kind of responsibility. If you fail, you have let the Marine Corps down. You've let that tradition that goes back to Tun Tavern down. You let Dan Daly and those people at Bella Wood down when he says come on you bastards do you want to live forever when i was a youngster i saw a marine and I said then, I want to be a Marine one day. My dad had told me, son, I want you to go and don't write home and tell me that they're riding your back. The only time someone can ride your back is when you're not standing tall. My mother hugged me and said, son, go show them what you're made of. Daddy got home, he just looked at me and set his tired old body down on the steps and said, Why did you join the Marine? Don't you know they're the first to fight, always in trouble? And I have to think, Daddy, you don't really know me very well because that's where I am. Some of the most rewarding things is to bring these young kids in and in 12 or 13 weeks when their parents come in and tell you which one is my son and you point him out and it's i don't even recognize him my god he's calling me sir you know he's changed he's transformed physically he's transformed in his maturity and his discipline and his sense of self-confidence and pride when you come out of boot camp you don't think you're good you know you're good we rehearse and we brief and we make sure everybody understands what has to take place. And when it comes down to it and things get ugly, you watch those young men, those young women do exactly what they were trained and told to do, like a Swiss watch, with precision. And it's just unreal. In spite of how 
low misty rain, low clouds, no immediate leadership, lost of all of my lieutenants. I still got the job done because my Marines knew what was in my mind, what I was thinking, and what they could expect out of me and expect from the Marines on their flanks. And that was move to the sounds of the enemy's guns. Vietnam and Korea through the islands of the Pacific. You see the Marines in the lead, the Fallujahs and the Anbar provinces. We have always been up front in the toughest parts of the battle. You have the most senior alongside the most junior. He was there on every run. He was there on every force march. He's there on the convoys. He's there when they're shooting at us. Why? And this is the young guy looking up at the older guy. Why do you still do this? Because every Marine's a rifle. No matter who you are, whether you are a cook or an administrator or a logistician or a supply clerk, you are a rifleman. If the fight ever does come back to those lines, they can fight. Every Marine can fight.